Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Dave Bybee. Um, I'm a member of the company Franche de la Marine de Contracor. Um, our commanding officer was Claude Pierre Picotti, Sir de Contracor. And Contracor is a little town um, about an hour's drive um, northeast of Montreal along the St. Lawrence Seaway. Contracor himself was a French Marine captain. He came from a family of wealth and nobility. Um, he bought his commission into the Army. Um, Contra Corps served as Commandant of Old Fort Niagara and he was a part of the Celeron expedition that laid um, lead plates down the Allegheny River um, claiming the land for France. Um, but we were the company of independent Marines that garrisoned Fort Duquesne. Contra Corps was there from 1754 to I believe 1756 when he headed back north to Montreal. Um, but we, you know, we were the company of Marines along with our native allies that came to Fort Necessity, which we are at today. Lay siege on Fort uh, Fort Necessity, a little bit of a revenge case for the assassination of the French diplomat Jumonville. But we were basically the first um, National Guard of um, Nouvelle France. We, f we formed our unit just out of the basic love of history. Um, we have a wide variety of members, um, surveyors, school teachers, um, truck drivers, um, but we all share one common thing and that's our love of history. Um, I personally got started in this because um, my aunt and uncle were um, vol volunteering in Hannestown and they met and they had a friend that was involved in the French Indian War that told them, hey, you should come out and try this. They went out and tried it and said to me way back in 1983, hey, you need to come out and try this. And I've been a living historian since 1983, that was before I graduated high school. Um, but yeah, it's it's the common common goal of telling the hit the history of of our nation. The flags that you see behind me um, are on loan from my aunt and my cousin Ryan. Um, they belong to my Aunt Lee's husband, Ray Washlasky. Um, Ray and his son, Ryan, spent, or with the help of Ryan, spent countless hours researching the French military regimental flags of the French and Indian War. Um, he made these all himself and decorated them or painted them to the the appropriate colors and um, design. This particular flag is the King's Colors, His Most Christian Majesty Louis XV, the King of France. That was his own personal colors and because he was a, a Christian leader, it was all white, virtue, uh, pureness. Uh, with Lily of France, the Fleur de Lis, you'll see on a lot of the other flags. Yes. So. One question, why is the flag of the French king next to a British fort? Well, if you are aware of the outcome of the Battle of Fort Necessity, um, Major Washington surrendered, so the French actually had control of this fort. So it was the last flag, military flag, to fly here at Fort Necessity. And about how long was that? How many? How many hours did that last? <laughs> that was about five or six, because after the surrender and the, the British moved out, the French destroyed the fort. One. This particular flag is of the regiment Lorraine. Now, all the military units that, <clears throat> excuse me, that were over here during the French Indian War were second and third battalions. Um, the first battalion stayed in Europe, or they went to 
one of the other continents that the French Union War was being fought on. And it was fought on all the continents except for Antarctica and Australia. But this one in particular, um, Lorraine, is the king's wife, the Queen of France. Um, and she, believe it or not, she was Polish in heritage. So it's a little bit different design, um, but again, it has a white cross in it. Um, and I'm thinking, due to the fact that uh, King Louis was his most Christian majesty. Now, we talk about kings and queens soldiers, particularly with the French. What does that mean? Why are they designated kings and queens soldiers? Well, if you were a regiment of the king, you were paid and supplied by the king. If you were a regiment of the queen, you were paid and supplied by the queen. Um, and one way on the battlefield to designate whether you were a king's regiment or a queen's regiment was your collars and your cuffs. If you had blue collar and blue cuffs, you were a regiment of the king. If you were a regiment of the queen, you had red collars and cuffs. And you could also tell by the way the pockets were designed of which particular unit you were a part of. But ultimately it was whether you had red cuffs and collars or blue cuffs and collars. The flag here with the black and red corners is Regiment Lassar. That was a regiment of the king, um, supplied um, and paid for by the king of France. Unlike Lorraine's unit with the red cuffs and red collars and supplied and paid for by the queen. Um, and Regiment Lassar was the unit that um, my uncle Ray Washlasky had started when we first started doing the French interpretation. Um, and I was a member of that for um, many years and then um, got out of that and started doing the Company Franche. This is um, the Company Franche de la Marine flag. Um, all the Marine units marched under this this flag. Um, if you see in the middle, um, it says Premier et Terre. Um, it's Latin for by sea and by land. Um, the Marines of the time period were trained not only to serve aboard ship, but to also be land-based troops. If you would like to learn more about the French and Indian War, um, take some road trips. Um, our next event will be in the weekend before Father's Day at Cook Forest in Cooksburg, PA. Even a more beautiful site is Fourth of July weekend on Fort Niagara up in Youngstown, New York. That's our biggest event of the year. There'll be five to seven, eight hundred reenactors there um, portraying soldiers from both the British and the French. The siege of Fort Niagara, which lasted 19 days, we condense it down into three days hitting hitting the highlights. Does that complete with somebody's head getting taken off? Um, yes. Uh, General John Perdot lost his head when he accidentally walked in front of one of his own mortars as it was being fired. Um, and then, last but not least, uh, the weekend of October 13th, 14th, and 15th. Uh, we will be at Fort Ligonier for Fort Ligonier Days and the Siege of Fort Ligonier, which happened on October 12th, 1758. Um, the French came out of Fort Duquesne to lay siege to um, Fort Ligonier. Um, it was a small partial French victory where they managed to um, get some cattle and a few other things, but ultimately the French lost that engagement. Come out and support your local historic sites. Um, and the people ask the questions of the reenactors there because everyone is a great wealth of knowledge and information. Um, everyone has put countless hours into researching their um, unit or their portrayal. Um, so thanks and thanks for watching.